Hi everybody, my name is Carrie, and this is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to my family room. Today we're gonna to be doing a video in my family room rather than down in my design studio. The weather was just so nice here in Virginia. The sun is shining. I brought all my stuff upstairs to the couch. I thought we'd have a little chit chat. It's a little more comfy. Um, show you guys some of my stitching, some of my quilting, some of my haul and thrifting. I've got some haul that came in as well as some good thrifting finds. Little stitchy, little quilty, um, but hopefully a little something for everybody. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much for coming by. My channel is a quilty, stitchy, maker of all the things type of channel. Today is gonna to be a floss tube episode. I'm gonna to try to stick to the stitching and the quilting, but I also do sewing tutorials, videos, patterns. I would love for you to follow me here as well as on Instagram. I am there most often, try to be there every day in the stories just to give y'all a little look-see into what I'm doing. So today we're just gonna to go to dive right into my stitching basket that I brought upstairs. I'm gonna show you some of my whips. I've got a past finish to show you, a couple past finishes, because one of them relates to my whips. So let's just dive in. So the first whip is a new start for this week. If you follow me on Instagram, you have seen this before. Last week I did a quick little IGTV color conversion for you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is Hello from Liz Matthews, first day of Christmas. I'm sorry, I forgot to bring the pattern upstairs to show you. That's the problem with having things upstairs and downstairs. Sorry for that interruption. My dog decided it was time to chew on his bone right here under my feet. So I stopped the video to put him outside. He can enjoy the sunshine outside too. So anyway, back to the programming. So I've got Hello from Liz Matthews. It's her beautiful 12 days of Christmas uh, pattern that she released. So this is first day. I did this last season and um but i did not use i did my own color conversion with miss satis silks now if you don't know what miss satis silks is you're in for a treat um or maybe you're gonna get mad at me because i'm showing you the fabulousness of them but they are some gorgeous yummy silks um if you've never still sticks Stitched with silk. Oh, that's a tongue tie. Um, you you just you treat yourself. Treat yourself this Christmas, uh, this holiday season. It's just so yummy. Um, so I did my own color conversion with Mercedes silks to to stitch this pattern, and so um, you can get her. I will link her down below. She has an Etsy shop and her own site. So anyway, so I decided I am in full Christmas mode. Haven't put up the tree yet, but it's coming. Um, so I decided that it's time to get out the next one. So last week I started a new whip. It is the third day of Christmas. Um, and so I got that one all kitted up. I didn't uh, showed you guys my color conversion on Instagram. Uh, how how I do it, how I switch from DMC, because Liz charts and MPIs, um, those are gorgeous. But since I had the full complete collection from Mercedes, I decided to color convert to Mercedes. And so far I'm loving the way it's coming out. I'm sorry I didn't iron. You know, it has been busy, but I just wanted to pop on here and show you guys. Oh my gosh, look at this French hen. No, three French hens third day of Christmas. I, I think I called it a rooster in my Instagram video, but this guy is the reason. I mean, I love the whole pattern. Don't get me wrong, but I had to do this French hen first with these little Quaker stars on his body. I just love him so much. And this blue, it's kind of coming up. That's a better view with the light shining just a little bit for you guys. But the blue is so yummy. Um, and so Miss Sadis does all of hers in numbers. So 41 and 37 are the two blues that I color converted to. And it's just so yummy. So that is my whip that I am almost sewing, <laughs> stitching, 
monogamously on. And so I am loving that pattern. Like I said, it is Hello from Liz Matthews, third day of Christmas. She's up to five. Um, I have one, two, three. Maybe my haul, I might have some more to show you guys, but I'm loving that one. It is on a 14 count vintage Ada that I got. I showed it in the Instagram. I should have written it down, but it's a 14 count that I got from Fat Quarter Shop because I was able to get a full yard because I knew I wanted to stitch them all together or all on the same fabric. I'm not stitching them together. I wanted to stitch them all on the same fabric because what I think I'm going to do with the finishes, of course, you know, there's 12 days and I've, I'm only on half of my second one. So let's be real here. I've got a while. I've got some time to plan out the finishing, but I do believe I want to finish all of them together, maybe on a wall quilt, like combined stitching, my quilting with my stitching on a wall quilt. I need more walls. Let's just, that's the problem. I need more walls, but I've got some time to get some walls. So we'll see how that works out. So that is the whip I've been working on pretty pretty frequently um every night i did bring another one just to show you i did make a little progress from last week i also have the plum street samplers mary one just a cute little doll bowl um stitch that i'm working on again sorry i didn't iron but you can see vintage country mocha 20 count Ada. I did my own color conversion again on this one. I wanted it to match what I stitched for Mary 3. So I did Mary 3, last floss tube, I think I showed it to you, more the one before. But I stitched Mary 3, and obviously these are all about the same kind of, the themes are Santas and leaves and things like that. So the red and the green that are in Mary 3, I went ahead and I carried on to Mary 1, even though Paulette called for different reds and greens, and these are beautiful, but because I'm using the same 20 count vintage country mocha, I want them to all, they're gonna be complimentary pillows for me. Um, what else? So this is in one of my Tiger Lily stitching patchwork bags. And what else is in here? So the part of my haul, we'll just skip, we'll just go skip all around. Um, this week, I was able to hit up my local needle workshop in Stitches in Alexandria, and I bought myself, I just couldn't resist, oh, this Cardinal, so cute. I'm super excited to stitch this up. I went ahead and I picked up, um, what did I pick up when I was there? <clears throat> it's a 16 count Stone Point Ada. It's close. Um, and I and I kitted it up with all the threads as well when I was there. You know, when you when you're in the fabric store or in the local needlework store, it's fun just to kit it up and all the things. Oh, there's one more. I don't, this yellow is or this tomato red is really bright. We'll see. Um, I don't know about the fabric. It's okay. I'm not in love with it, which is probably, sorry for bending over and showing the top of my head, uh, which is probably why I didn't start it immediately. I'm usually like, I buy it, start it, go. But the reason I didn't start it, and here's one of my past finishes. So this is by the same artist, um, Artful Offerings, Apple Harvest. This fabric is yummy look at the modeling on that it's definitely a picture this plus yummy yummy modeling of course i didn't bring the pattern to show you i'm maybe i should think more about bringing these things upstairs so i can prepare a little better but it's on my instagram i did this stitching back in march or april of this year i was down on spring break with my son and my daughter down in Clemson. We did a lake week and I had a gaggle of teenagers. And so I just sat and stitched and they swam in the lake. So I got this one done down there. It was an easy, pretty quick stitch one week. This fabric was a dream to stitch on. The modeling is perfect. Obviously I haven't finished it. 
I haven't quite figured out how I want to finish it, which is why I haven't done it yet. It's kind of one of those oddball sizes. It wants to be a square, but not really a square, just a square plus. So it makes it hard. Um, I'm a thrift store. I'm a frame your DIY frame your own. Um, so finding a frame that's a square plus, not a full like eight by 10, but not an eight by eight, like an eight by nine, it's, it's hard. So I haven't found it yet. It's in my spreadsheet. Speaking of, so somebody had asked me and I decided um, I answered her, of course. Um, but I thought, you know, maybe I'll tell you guys again. You had asked me about my Google Sheets. And so what I do, let me just review just right here. So if you're new here, you're just like, mm, what's that about? So because I'm a DIY finisher of my own, I am always on the hunt and I'm always thrifting for frames. And so, yes, I could just buy all the frames and have a whole huge stack of frames to go to. But again, I don't have a lot of walls. I don't have a lot of storage spaces. So instead, what I do is I created a Google Sheets file. So it's on my phone and on my computer. And so it has, and it's got three different columns, or it's got more than that, but the three columns that matter here are the name of the pattern and the, the size and the stitching. So for example, this is 101 by 102. It's a square. This cardinal one, 101 by 102. So depending on whether I put this on 14 count or 16 count, anyway, my spreadsheet will say 101 and 102. And as you know, to get the finished inches, 101 divided by 14 or 101 divided by 16 will give me the six-ish inch. It will give me the measurements of the finished piece, six inches plus approximately square. But that will be in my spreadsheet. And so that way, when I am out thrifting, I pull up my spreadsheet and I can go look at the, you know, 10 whips. This wouldn't work if you had 100 whips. I, I usually try to have, well, right now I might have 20. Let's be honest, the whip parade is in my future, but 20 or so um, whips. And then it has all their measurements. So I can look at a glance and know like, okay, so this is finished six by six. And ideally an eight by eight or nine by nine frame would be perfect. Seven by seven might be a little, if I didn't want to have any extra fabric or a double mat type of situation, but I would have them all referenced there, especially some of the funky ones. You know, I have a couple, I have the um, anniversaries of the heart, which is a big giant one, as well as I'm doing the Plum Street samplers, salt boxes for the seasons. There's two for each season. I'm doing those, you know what? See, this is what's good about bringing y'all upstairs. I was stitching on this last night, so I went ahead and I just pulled it right off the table. Wasn't planning on talking about it, but since I am, let me show you. So this is the Plum Street Samplers salt boxes. And so as you can see, there's gonna be eight boxes. And so this is gonna be a funky size frame. Um, it is in, isn't that fun? So yeah, I was working on those white boxes last night while we had, we, there was a movie on that I kind of had to pay attention, so I couldn't read a pattern, but I could do that kind of stitching as I was watching. Anyway, so um, I would have that full thing referenced in my spreadsheet, so that way when I came upon a frame that was long and skinny, and I had my handy dandy tape measure in my purse, it's a cute little fabric-y tape measure, and I can pull it out and measure to see, I haven't found the perfect frame for it yet, but I've still got some time. Um, so that's how I do my Google spreadsheet, that's my haul, I'm already all over the place, let's see if I can... Reel her back in. Okay, so as I was, let's just stay with my haul for a minute. So I'm at, in, where am I? In Stitches in Alexandria. It is my local needle workshop. I live in Percival, Virginia, which is, um, anyway, it's about an hour outside of DC. And so I, I do travel to, into Alexandria pretty often. And so that is my go-to needle workshop. So while I was there, I knew I wanted a new Christmas stitching. And I'm dropping my goodies. So I got myself the Cardinal. So cute. He's going to be a cute little pillow um, on my couch, maybe if I get her done. But while I was there, I always liked to, to peruse to see if there's anything 
new. I look at the new books. So that store is organized by season. Then there's the samplers. Then there's the new book spinners. And so, and then a hundred different things to look at at the wall. But anyway, so I, I didn't find anything new there that I hadn't already seen on Flastube and ordered and things like that. But I did go ahead and check out, and of course, you know, one of them, no, I did check out her Prairie Schooler Spinner, and I was able to luck into these cardstock versions. So these vintage, as you know, Prairie Schooler, now most of her patterns are in the bags, and they're the... Um, other paper, but she did have three more of these 12 days of Santa's in the cardstock booklets. So I had to get those. I just felt like, I mean, I'm on a 12 days kick. So I got the 12 days of Prairie Schooler Santas. I've never done a Prairie Schooler Santa, whether it's those little card ornaments for the year. I was gonna get those, but then when I saw these cardstock ones, I went to this one instead. So I got that while I was there. And then the last thing I got then I was there, so cute. Let's see if I can find a way to show you guys. This is just the cute, listen, we like all the things, right? Woo! We like things, collecting. So if you don't know, I am a uh, Tiger Lily Designs, this tiger, I'm a Clemson tiger. And so all the things that have to do with tigers, I'm a sucker for. So these scissors by Bowen were just adorable. I couldn't resist. I actually haven't even used them yet, but they're super cute and so, we can never have enough scissors, can we, really? So I got myself a pair of those scissors. And let's see, what else? So down there, when I'm down in Alexandria, I am thrifting for gnomes. See this gnome guy right here? I'm not thrifting for gnomes. I'm thrifting for sweaters for the gnomes. So this, this little Clemson gnome guy right here. Um, I'm almost into gnome season, probably within the next 10 days. Um, I will switch gears and all the gnomes will come. And so what that means is I, I make handmade gnomes for artisan markets here locally and as well as online. And, um, they're all made from upcycled sweaters. And so there is a great thrift store down in Alexandria. It's like this huge Walmart. I mean, it's like superstore of, uh, thrift stores. And so while I'm there, I always check out the frames because like I mentioned previously, reference back to my framing thing. Um, you know, I like, I like having frames and I took my spreadsheet and looked for the thing. Okay. But anyway, so while I was in there, I found this. Can you see? It's a save the stitches. This little thread that's, you know, probably sweater already. But this was a gorgeous piece of stitching framed by Total Crafts here in Annandale, Virginia. And if you don't know, you know, that's who Brenda and Laura send a lot of their stuff to. But beautiful stitching. Six dollars. Seriously? So I had to get this. And then also, now let's see if I can not give you the glare. Okay, maybe. <gasps> Look at this full coverage. I mean, really. This was just a gorgeous. Now see, this person just finished it themselves. You can see it's just, a, it was an Ada fabric. But the stitches... I just couldn't let that stay there. I could appreciate it. So I had to bring it home with me. I'm not quite sure what it's gonna be when it grows up. Um, I may just pop her on the wall. I may turn her into a project bag. Speaking of project bags, um, that is something, of course, everything's falling off the couch. So project bags are something that I also like to do. Uh, I showed you guys a little bit. Let me just show you real quick some of my vintage stitching project bags. I think in my last floss tube, I showed you real quick, but these are some of the ones that I have still. 
they're all made from vintage upcycled stitchings one of a kind project bags that i make um i just like to give a new life as i'm you know saving the stitches upcycling textiles i like to give these new linens a life so these were table linens in their first life and now they're gonna live a life they're they're live their new best life as a project bag um so if that's interesting to you you can check my link below but so i'm thinking these may become project bags one of a kind i don't know yet we'll see um, what else did I, I get? got a sweet little message, um, and a thank you card from a giveaway winner. So sweet. Look at this little needle minder. It's so cute. So stitch toolbox is her Etsy shop. So she was super sweet and sent me that needle minder. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to keep that packaged up so I could show you guys straight out. And then the last piece of my haul, sorry for the rustle, but you know what all I did was pop this envelope in or pop that package right in there. And I knew I couldn't get into it until I showed it to you guys. So what did I get? Well, you know, Sometimes you have to put some things in your one, two, three stitch. It's got to move from your wish list to your cart and you got to buy. So I did. Um, what I got first was a 20 count vintage mocha. I, I don't even know. It might be a yard. It might be a half yard. I don't remember. But it's a big old piece. And I got it, once I got those Prairie Schooler Santas, I knew that I was loving this fabric. And, and the modeling was just enough fun for me to wanna to put those Santas on here. So I wanted to make sure I got plenty of it. So one, two, three stitch had a huge piece. So I stocked up. So now I've got the Santas fabric. Do I have the DMC? No, not yet, but I digress. Um, and then of course, while I was shopping, you know, I always check out the picture of this plus this might be yummy for the bird for that cardinal. Maybe it's coming out a little gray on screen, but really it's a soft bluey gray. What did they call it? Picture this plus quarter yard, 18 count. I'm guessing Darling, the printer stopped. Starling or Darling, Arling is what I can read, but but it's a gray blue. And that's the same texture as my goat fabric. It's just not so in your face blue. Mm. I kind of like the in your face blue. We'll see. But I had to add this to my stash because I love the texture of that picture, this plus fabric. Um, and because I'm an Ada stitcher, you don't really get the modeling and the fun fabrics all that often. So as when I was there on one, two, three stitch and I saw it, I was like, okay, got to get that. Um, what else did I get? Okay. So remember I was telling you that Liz Matthews has um, five. So I didn't have the fifth day. So I went ahead and I got the fifth day to add it to my collection. Of course, after I pressed buy and I came back and I was sorting and piling in, doing all the things, and I realized that I didn't have the fourth day. So that's back from my wish list to my cart for my next order. But I also, while I was there, I went ahead and I grabbed this chicken feed sack by Carriage House Samplings. It was just super fun and bright. Like I said, I moved it from my wish list to my buy cart. I just thought it was super adorable. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do it in the sack, but you know, I have dreams of having land and farms and chickens and things when I grow up. And so I thought this was gonna be perfect in my grown up kitchen. One day I'll have that kitchen and I can put it in there. So, 
Then I got a few Palm Street samplers. Okay, so I have a little bit of a, hello from Liz Matthews problem, and a little bit of a Plum Street pattern sampler problem. It's not a problem, I just like them all. And so when and if I do my whip parade, you will see that it's hello, it's Plum Street, and it's Blackbird. And then there's a couple mixed in, but those are the those are the heavy hitters. So what did I get? Let me just show you some of the things that Floss Tube has enabled me to put on my list. Now I had to get Autumn Fractor. I'm not quite sure why the picture is this way versus this way, but I thought this was super adorable. Of course, if I was gonna stitch Autumn, maybe, but I'm back to, I, I skipped right over the autumn stitching and as you can see, I'm in the Christmas mode. So I went right to that. But I also picked up this George Decorates for Martha. Again, I couldn't resist the pumpkins. Um, where I go in Alexandria is real close to Mount Vernon. So I see this Mount Vernon house at least twice a month. Um, so it's special to me and again, there's Mount Vernon again. So this is George, George and Martha. There you go, just hanging out in Mount Vernon. And then the blue skin, again, you know, I, I just, obviously I was on this little uh, Mount Vernon, George Washington kick, um, but those are all hopefully just little quick stitches. I like to have both quick stitches, smaller things, as well as, you know, my huge four salt boxes and a sampler partridge in a pear tree type of thing. But I like to have them all. And then of course, I don't know how this wasn't already in my stash. If you haven't seen it, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but home for the holidays. Of course, it's a beautiful Blackbird book. The Cardinal, I'm here all day for it. Um, this also might be an instance where I'm going to do I mean, like you've seen this a hundred times, but I'm thinking that this is gonna need a Mercedes color conversion because how yummy is that bird? How yummy would he be in one of her variegated reds? Super yummy. That's the answer to that question. So we'll see. That's what I got in my haul from 123 Stitch. We'll see what I actually kit up for next time. But right now it's at least as fun collecting. So that is my stitching. So let me show you, if you wanna hang around for just a little bit more, I'll tell you what else I have been up to. Um, I've been super busy. Why I haven't had a lot of time stitching is this month I did a Giftober promotion with my Tiger Lily design. So I was trying to give you three projects that you could stitch for gifting later on in the season. And so I did get the t-shirt tote bag tutorial live and up, and I will link that here or here. I will link that somewhere in the video so you guys can go check that out. But it's how to show, how to sew a tote bag from a t-shirt. Make a tote bag out of a upcycled t-shirt. Again, I'm all about reusing. So, um, but the big project for the month was an advent calendar. And, and by big, I mean huge because Jeezy peasy, that was an undertaking. Um, personally, I've been sewing these advent calendars for myself and is to sell in markets for years, but I've never written a pattern or shot a video or tried to teach someone else how to do it. Um, and then once I promised it to you, I had to deliver. And so it was a little overwhelming. I'm gonna be real honest with you, but I got it done. It is posting, hopefully, it has posted prior to today, because today is Floss Tube Friday, and so it was supposed to have posted already in the YouTube world, so we're just gonna cross our fingers that it's there. But what it is, is it is a custom advent calendar. So you can see that it's quilty pockets, and you're gonna, there's one through 20, verse 24 pockets, it's a wall hanging quilt that measures about 32 by 52, give or take. I don't remember exactly. 
You customize it with a family name, a word, family love, hope, blessings, whatever you wanted to write on the bottom of yours. Um, so this was my big undertaking for the last couple of weeks. Um, I was writing the pattern, which is a PDF pattern that is downloadable. I was shooting the video. So let me just take two minutes to tell you guys about how this works. If you have any interest in sewing one of these on your own, I didn't want to mislead you and just not give you a little bit more information of what it is. So like I said, this there's a PDF and a video tutorial. You need both. You cannot sew with just the YouTube video tutorial. Like I said, hopefully it's on YouTube and you've already seen the little, ooh, look at that little teaser thumbnail. That's great, the video's out. It's 90 minutes long, um, but which is my longest video ever. It's a little overwhelming, but that's the video and that's the assembly instruction teaching you all the things, but you have to have the PDF pattern to go with it. So the PDF pattern is available on my website. The PDF pattern does not have assembly instructions, does not. It only has the materials list. It has charts and templates. There's a chart, there's, a there's my chart that's colored in. If you watch the video, there's another chart you'll need for other planning. There charts and templates are what's in the PDF. So I designed, this is my first time designing a like combo pattern and video together. I've done videos. I did a, you know, the t-shirt tutorial video, and then I've done patterns. Just a PDF, here's a book, go sew it yourself. Um, but, and those are great. It's alone and separate, those are great things. But I decided with this one, is I really enjoy the one-on-one -on -one teaching. I used to teach lively in studios, obviously back in the day and all the things. Hands-on teaching with students is my jam and I like to to help you along and so that's the video you need that um, that's why I decided to kind of marry the two together you need the video and you need the PDF so hopefully you can be like in a class with me you're gonna sew along with me um, what I did include and of course this one doesn't have it but it does include on the last page of the PDF is a list of the 10 steps. There's 10 steps, you're like 90 minute video, holy cow. Don't worry, I broke it up into 10 segments for you. So what's that mean? So it means you got your PDF pattern, you, you, you go on my website, you, you put it in your cart, you download it, you do all the things, and now you've got your PDF. You're gonna get your materials. You can go to the video and watch the introduction and the materials portion. Go back and buy your materials. Come back one week, two weeks, two days later, and watch the step, the next step. I have time stamps on page 11 of the pattern that tells you the time stamp for each step. So that way you don't have to go and try to figure out, okay, where in the video was I? Sometimes YouTube will save it for you. If you just stop and you come back, it'll start you right back where you left off. But if it doesn't, I've identified chapters within the video to show you, okay, you're doing step four, go to 27 minutes and 32 seconds, and that's the beginning of step four. And so I have little chapter headlines. Um, so hopefully, I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to sew along with me. This is a cherished, not this particular one, I just made this one, but um, the one I've had be in my family for years is cherished and loved by my family. It's part of our, our traditions. We would, every morning when the kids were little, there could be a little sweet treat, a little toy, a little something in there to get. Um, sometimes there would be a little note that says, today we're gonna make holiday Christmas cookies, or we're gonna watch a you know, Christmas movie tonight, or go to the National Zoo and see the zoo lights. And there would be a little activity note. I'm all about the memories and things like that. And so there would always be a little something in there every day, it was just from, for fun for them to pull it out. So this could be something that you and your family enjoy or something that you're gonna go ahead to gift to somebody special that they can enjoy. Maybe they have a new family um, and they can start that tradition. But, so that's what I have been busy doing. 
and um, hopefully it is out in the world. And if you follow me on Instagram and you follow me, you've seen it already. And, and this is just a little refresher, but that's what I've been busy doing. I did want to go ahead since I was here, I brought up one of my other quilts just for a little quilt show and tell to show you guys. I know that you guys really appreciate and you like seeing some of my quilts. And you know what? I decided that maybe on each of my videos, I'll pull out, listen, you just see a little tidbit of my maker home. Um, I showed a couple pictures on my Instagram lately of little uh, corners, vignettes of my house, let's say. I have, I have a maker home and what that means is I've got a quilt on the wall. I've got homemade pillows behind me. Um, you know, I've got a quilt ladder. I've got quilts over there. There's a lot of things here. And so I can always just pull from my personal collection and share with you guys. I like to surround my thing in my house and my home with things that I love and that are meaningful to me. And so I just I'm sharing it with you. And so this is one that I wanted to share with you. And let's see if I can figure out. Um, this is, I do t-shirt quilts um, as part of my Tiger Lily Designs business is a t-shirt quilt business. And so this is one of my personal ones. You can see I put some stitching on the back of it. Um, it says Tour of Ireland, Dublin, Kilkenny, Dingle, Mount Shannon, July of 2018. So in July of 2018, um, Patrick and I went on an Ireland 10 day adventure. And during that adventure, we picked up a shirt or or some kind, you know, one maybe a tea towel or something from each of the locations or each of the something specials. Then we also went to a quilt shop in where are we? In Mount Shannon, kind of between Mount Shannon and Kilkenny. But there was a beautiful quilt shop that I spent hours and hours and hours in. And Patrick just went down to the local pub and had a beer and um he was a, a good trooper on the whole thing. So but this is one of the cherished quilts in my house right now is the Ireland and the memories. I mean, I can just look and, you know, this was a, this was a pub. Of course, there's lots of pubs in Ireland, but this was a pub that we went to in Kilkenny and we sat in the back garden and had a pizza. It was beautiful, like looked at a castle. Um, loved everything about that one. This is, you know, this was a tea towel that we picked up in, in Dingle, and it just shows a little map of Ireland, and I can remember us driving through this countryside, and of course, you know, Guinness beer was on top of all the things. Um, Holy Island in Mount Shannon. It was one of our favorite spots. It's kind of like law. We had a VRBO in Mount Shannon. We went to a weaving company, did a, did a tour there. Oh, oh my gosh, it was so great. Um, they they showed me how to the heddle and the shift and the thing. Oh, listen, if you're, anyway. Um, you know, just the, the Celtic designs and the t-shirts, and just the memories and the fact that all this fabric was actually bought in Ireland and it's all soft and squishy and full of memories. Like I said, this is one of the ones that, um, that gets fought over and my house when it becomes to be quilt season, when it comes to snuggle under quilt time. So it's one of my favorites. Um, we're already planning hopefully in the next post-COVID land. We're going to plan another trip and make another trip blanket. But this is one of my favorite ones that I've got. This is one of my personal ones and it's a favorite one besides my Clemson one, of course. But um, I've shown you guys that before, but I wanted to show you guys this one. Um, if I can, I put a full shot of it just so you can see it in its entirety. I'm not doing a very good job holding it up and showing it to you. But um, I will put a picture of the whole thing in here as well. But thanks so much for coming to my channel. I hope that I 
inspired you, enabled you. Maybe you saw something that you need to add to your wish list and or cart as well. Um, if you wanted to come and advent quilt stitch with me, I would love for you to stitch along. I've got a hashtag tiger lily advent that you can follow. Maybe see some of those things come together, but until next time, thanks for team.